Unified champion Andy Ruiz Jr. bosses up on Anthony Joshua. He says no UK for the rematch. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel, donations, Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. TMZ Sports. They caught up with Andy Ruiz Jr., who just won best upset. He competed against other sports and other moments in sports, you know, like tennis and NHL. And he came out victorious. He won an ESPY. To my knowledge, this is his first ESPY. And congratulations to him. I did a video about that. But TMZ, link in the description, TMZ Sports. Looks like they were there. And he was signing autographs from, for the fans. And the TMZ cameras caught up with Andy Ruiz Jr. And they said, hey, what's up? What's up with your next fight? And he was like, yeah, I'm about to fight Anthony Joshua. You know, it's pretty run of the mill. He says, I'm ready. I'm sure he's training hard. And so am I. I'm, all, I'm out here training as well. He says, it's my time. And then when it, they said, the cameraman said something to the effect of, where do you think the rematch should take place? He says it can happen in New York, Madison Square Garden, basically where it happened the first time. He said, I would love it in Mexico or somewhere in the U.S. So New York, Mexico, he said we could do it at Staples Center out here. You know, we could do it in Vegas. And then the cameraman said, yo, what about the U.K.? And Andy Reeves is like, nah, I'm calling the shots now. We got our own demands, like no U.K., so it kind of sheds light on what Oscar De La Hoya, in my opinion, Oscar De La Hoya had released this tweet and he said, don't worry about Canelo to Eddie Hearn, something to that effect. I, you know, I talked about it on the channel, did a video. He said, don't worry about Canelo's next move. You should be worried about Joshua versus Ruiz, you know, part two, which I heard you're having problems like finalizing for DAZN. And this kind of corroborates that because you got to look at this the fight took place june 1st so a brand new fresh month joshua lost ruiz beat him he got knocked down four times literally two three days after the actual fight eddie hearn took to social media his verified account and he says we have triggered the immediate rematch details coming soon so Everybody knew within a matter of a few days of the loss that they were triggering the rematch clause rematch and the fight would be negotiated and would happen. So this is about, you know, June 3rd, June 4th, maybe, you know, and we've already entered July and it seems like a pretty it's July 11th seems like a pretty easy fight to to negotiate if you protected yourself in the contract. So to me, this shows me, in my opinion, most likely a negligence in, in terms of Team Joshua and a pompous and a bit of arrogance, an air of invincibility. And they really didn't think that Joshua would lose this fight to Andy Ruiz Jr. That's that's my honest speculation. Yes, it is speculation, but that's my honest opinion. The reason being is it seems like they were ill prepared for the rematch because they didn't think there would be a rematch. They thought Joshua would go out there, have a successful American debut, you know, maybe be in, you know, some competitive rounds and then ultimately probably knock out Andy Ruiz Jr. Like he's knocked out everybody else except for Joseph Parker, right? But Andy Ruiz Jr. had other plans and he spoiled the party and. It's crazy to see how Andy Ruiz Jr., he's been fighting for quite some time. And he's always been the same fighter and he's been a good fighter. His style hasn't changed. You know, he's matured and evolved probably in some departments. But all in all, it's the same fighter. And now everybody loves him. And he really, literally, like Kanye West and Twista, he became a celebrity overnight. Like he became an overnight celebrity. 
Nobody was really even talking about Andy Ruiz. And the reason I know is Andy Ruiz just fought on the undercard, and I don't even think it was a co-feature, of Danny Garcia versus Adrian Granados. So this was, I think, in April. It was the night that Crawford fought Khan. And nobody was even talking. They were talking about Garcia Granados' performance, and they were talking about Crawford Khan outcome. You know, maybe Shakur Stevenson and some other people who fought that night. I didn't see anyone even talking about Andy Ruiz Jr., his fight with Dimitrenko, except for me. You know, but this is a this is a telling interview from Andy Ruiz Jr. He says, "Nope, we the A side now, no UK." So he shot down the whole idea of the UK and it's funny because Eddie Hearn he's the one that kept bringing up oh it's going to happen in the US or the UK you know Principality Stadium you know could happen could be the venue but it doesn't sound like there's a level of confidence because why would it, it sounds like there's a level of confidence with with Andy Ruiz not with with uh, Eddie Hearn because if you know that you put strict clauses and sections you know i don't even know what you would call but sections in the contract that would have protected joshua in the event of a rematch meaning just spell out what the rematch would entail and if you did that then i don't even understand what the back and forth would even be about do you get what i'm saying like so in the contract if you said okay if joshua were to lose there's a rematch clause if he were to lose we get to pick the the platform that the rematch is on you know these are the purse splits uh this is the location you know it has to happen in an agreed location it has to happen at the same location as the first you know we have options that you could spell certain things like that out so if you didn't do that this would be why team joshua was probably sweating bullets like if you look at eddie hearn's face after joshua lost he looked like in shambles he looked really like oh my gosh what have i done type of thing you know so we'll see how it plays out if the doesn't get this fight that's a huge l for eddie hearn team joshua and the like if premier boxing champs get the fight some kind of way and it goes on fox pay-per-view or showtime or whoever that's gonna be horrible but andy ruiz let him tell it he's saying he's the a side so if he's saying it publicly to tmz you know a big a big network or a big um platform then i'm pretty sure he's spoken with his team he's he had dialogue with al Heyman and the powers that be to have that confidence that they're protected you know so the fighters are fighters. They they really worry about the fight and the nutrition and making weight and those types of things, training, sparring. So it sounds like Andy Ruiz Jr. has a good team behind him and a good structure. And it sounds to me like they're telling him, hey, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You know, you're the A side. Because I why how how or why would Andy Ruiz have A side confidence if everything was mapped out in the rematch? And the rematch was already mapped out in the contract, I mean. You know, it wouldn't even make sense for him to be confident saying I'm the A-side and no UK. Unless, <laughs> in my opinion, unless he feels that that they have the jurisdiction to select and, and make sure it doesn't go in the UK. The other thing is this. I don't want to see this fight in the UK. You know, I don't think DAZN wants it in the UK. Like... This is just a mess, man. And I, I mentioned this, and I'm going to mention it again. Eddie Hearn is is basically like playing double agent. And I think that's what's hurting, hurting him as well. What I mean by double agent is he has more than one different brand to try to satisfy and appease. He has DAZN on one end who is trying to break ground in the U.S. and is not available in the U.K., and then in the UK, he has Sky Sports, which they have their own priorities and they're based out of the UK and they are not based out of the US. So he's partnered with these two different, basically platforms or networks, whatever you want to call them, with whole different priorities and mission statements. So Sky Sports, they need Joshua to win because that's their biggest star. He was earning money, etc. Sky Sports 
probably prefers to put it in the UK to give him the best chance of victory in the rematch. Beyond that, they have to broadcast this and televise this on pay-per-view, so they would probably prefer it happens on their time. So, you know, UK fans, it'll be prime time for the, for the UK. But DAZN has a whole different mission statement and different um, metrics that they're trying to accomplish, and they're trying to take over America. So they're saying pay-per-view's dead and all this taunting the competition. They want it to be in America, most likely, because if it happens in the UK, it would have to come on. You know, the car would start at like 2, 3 p.m. or something, and then the main event come come on by 4 or some, something, you know, right around there, at least California time, Pacific Standard Time, you know. So Eddie Hearn's trying to please both parties, but it, it it's almost impossible. Bill Cosby has an old quote. He says, I don't know the keys to success, but the keys to failure is trying to please everybody, which is true, you know. And I think Eddie Hearn's in between a rock and a hard spot. He owes a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are expecting things of him. But the difference is not everyone is on the same accord and has the same, like, outlook as to what should happen next sky sports is like nah we need something big we need, you know we want to prime time our time in the DAZN has their own ideology so if anything andy ruiz what he wants mexico or or us is more in line with what DAZN wants that's what it feels like so to me all in all i think andy ruiz is being truthful i think he is the a side here we'll see how it all plays out this is bad, man. This is pure negligence. They didn't really think they could lose to this dude, so it doesn't sound like these things were mapped out. That's that's how I see it. If you thought you if you knew you could lose to him, then you would have specified and spelled these things out to to save you trouble in the end. If you didn't think you could lose to him and it, it was in under a time crunch because Gerald Big Baby Miller failed a drug test, you know. I can see how you, you know, you skip corners and just put the basics in like a rematch clause and, you know, this and this. And you just put the basic parameters in. We'll see how it plays out. Link in the description. Andy Ruiz says he's the A side. I agree. He's the guy with the belts. He's become a celebrity overnight. You know, he just won an SB. Definitely the A side, you know, major L for Team Joshua in this situation, both in the fight, in the ring and out of the ring. Then on top of that, you have little things like, you know, this is just a difficult rematch. They're saying Joey Dueco hurt Joshua in sparring, you know, and it seems like there could be some legs to that story. But there's NDAs and different things evolve. Eddie Hearn almost got attacked by Joshua's pops, Robert Joshua. You know, it's just everything seems to be falling apart. The empire seems to be falling apart. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We working. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.